your thyroid. Let's talk more about the thyroid since you're on the thyroid website. Thyroid has direct communication to the immune system. The immune system has a direct relationship in communicating to the thyroid. The thyroid talks to the gut, the brain, and the endocrine system. They all talk back and communicate because one affects the other. Another thing I want to talk about is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Okay. Your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis uh, releases cortisol. It releases cortisol into the amount of stress you've had until you've overly stressed it and it can't produce enough cortisol. It starts stealing your sex hormone precursors to make cortisol because the, that pathway in that gland has been depleted. When it does that, people start having problems with their sex hormone production. And what do they do? They think they need estrogen, they think they need testosterone. And the reality is what they really need to do is fix those functional systems so that they work better. And part of it is it also shows up with sugar regulation problems. When we treat people for Hashimoto's, I don't treat that condition, what I do is I work to manage your immune system. If you have Hashimoto's, it's very, very critical that you work to dampen down your immune response because you'll have flare-ups against the tissue and when it gets tired of just attacking your thyroid, it's called molecular mimicry, your immune system actually starts to attack other areas of your body. It starts attacking gut cerebellum and brain. That's why having an autoimmune condition can be really bad. It attacks your brain. It attacks the myelin sheath. If you're genetically sensitive to certain foods, every time you eat those foods, it causes an autoimmune attack and you can end up with problems like cerebellum problems, brain problems, multiple sclerosis. The list goes on and on related to that. There are six primary thyroid patterns we look for. First one is primary hypothyroidism. And of those six, that's really the only one that qualifies for really needing hormone replacement. There's hypothyroidism secondary to hypopituitary, meaning the neurological connection from the, the hypothalamus to the pituitary, and the pituitary is not producing properly. It needs nutritional support in that area. There's thyroid underconversion, meaning the thyroid needs help supporting the ability to make T4 and T3. Thyroid overconversion with a decreased thyroid binding globulin, meaning there's plenty of thyroid stuff, but the ability to carry it around to your peripheral cells needs support. Usually when they have that, there's uh, a problem in the conversion or there's a problem in not producing enough TBG. The other thing is TBG elevation. There's too many carriers. There's not enough free hormone. And that can be related from hormone replacement therapy and contraceptives. There's thyroid resistance, so the receptor sites are having problems, so we need to do nutritional support on the receptor site. We talked about Hashimoto's. There's other thing about Hashimoto's is there's antibodies to TPO and TPG. It's attacking those areas. There's gluten sensitivity or genetic food sensitivities. There's antibodies are also created to intrinsic factor. When you have problems with antibodies to intrinsic factor, that leads to lower B12, which leads to pernicious anemia. So not only do you have a thyroid problem, you're very anemic, you're very tired. When we do a neurological workup on people, because we look at people metabolically and neurologically, we look at people from a standpoint neurologically, we look at things like bilateral blood pressure. We look tissue oxygenation. I look for a, I use a pulse oximeter, and we look at your ability to saturate your tissue with oxygen. Most people are oxygen deficiency, heart rate and rhythm, salivary pH, reflexes. I do eye tests on people, checking for eye movement patterns, cranial nerve tests. We do cerebellum tests, and when we find problems wrong in those areas, I do neurological stimulation to drive those pathways to work better in conjunction of doing metabolic support so that the brain, the body start functioning better. Okay. All the tests we work on metabolically, blood sugar test, adrenal function, cortisol level, 
thyroid hormones, cerebellar antibodies, thyroid antibodies. I run female hormone panels on people. We do GI permeability tests, looking to see if you have leaky gut. Because if you have leaky gut, you're going to get undigested proteins across the blood, the gut brain, the gut barrier system, and it's going to fire up your immune system. And we run immune panels. What are the kind of problems people have when they have a disruption in brain signal, in neurological function, related to? breakdown from metabolic problems. When we look at things, people have things like chronic pain, chronic fatigue, fibro fog, migraine headaches and light sensitivities, blurred vision, increased sweating. I see that one a lot, hyperhidrosis. They have difficulty falling and staying asleep. One of the first things I do is I work around my people when they come become a patient is we start working on getting you sleeping properly so you can heal properly. They have episodes of depression and anxiety. They have difficulty scanning and reading patient pa pages. Difficulty expressing what they want to say. They have loss of short-term and loss of long-term memory. Changes in handwriting. They're more irritable, more fatigued. They get angry. They have problems with balance, tripping, dropping things. They have learning disabilities, dyslexia, ADD, ADHD. And these are the things we work with neurologically and metabolically. The brain, again, I'm going to go over it again. The brain needs regulated fuel in the form of oxygen, glucose, neurotransmitters, and hormones. And it needs activation. And when, that's why when we work with people in our clinic, we do what we call brain-based brain -based therapies. We do therapies to drive your brain to work better, to make your body work better. So when people come see me, they have a combination of neurologic and metabolic complications. They have breakdown. They're pieces of the puzzle. They have blood sugar regulation. They have hormone problems. They are oxygen deficiencies. They have cortisol problems. They have cerebellum problems. They actually have midbrain problems. The cerebellum sends signals to dampen down our midbrain. Our midbrain is our sympathetic survival system. 90% of your brain's function is to dampen down sympathetic expression. It's to dampen down and regulate our heartbeat. It's to control our blood supply, our visual input, our ability to survive. It keeps that under control. And when people start having neurological breakdown, they exhibit signs and symptoms for a long time of having breakdown in those areas. And they'll have, they'll have blood pressure problems. Look how common that is. Those problems can be related to sympathetic outflow. So when we work with people, we work on those things. We work from people f from a neurological standpoint and from a metal metabolic standpoint. And we work to take the combination of different pieces of the puzzle and we put them together to increase your functional health. We are a functional health center. And we do that from running proper labs, doing a good diagnostic workup, doing neurological stimulation to improve your health and to improve your function. We get you functionally working better and your health improves. When people come see me, I always tell them, you have to be serious. You have to be serious on a scale one out of 10. You have to be serious about fixing your problem. I tell everybody, you need to be an eight out of 10 or above to come to my office. You have to ask yourself, are you tired of how these health problems have affected your relationships, your work, your ability to enjoy life? You have to be serious and you have to be looking for an answer. And the kind of people that come see me are the ones who are looking for that. If this is you, fill out the form below. I'll send you a package. You have some requirements to get the packages filled out for me. Get them back and get them back to me and we'll schedule you for your first two free visits. That way we can see if we can accept you for care and see if you're a good candidate in our office. Thank you.